Hi everyone, it is a snowy day and I'm delighted on this day to be talking in another episode of Words, Images, and Worlds with comics creator Tom Rogers. I just made it sound like this was their second talk, but this is actually the first time we've met in Zoom. That's true. That's yes. true. Um, thanks so much for having me, Jason. My pleasure. Thank you for saying yes. I will start out as I so often do by mentioning a couple of works and worlds that you've created in. Mm -hmm. um, you brought together the worlds of Lovecraft and Tesla in a mm -hmm. very cool book called Herald. Um, you've also done some nonfiction informational text with Never Forget Heroes of 9-11. And then uh, I believe you've also worked in some worlds of DC Comics with um, work on Future Quest, which was a very cool run of bringing back some Hannah Barbera cartoon characters, as well as some work for Marvel Entertainment. Is that right? Um, so the future quest stuff, I was a background assistant for Ron Randall. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yes, I'd have and I've done some uh, more background stuff for Ron as well as Steve Lieber um, for DC as, and other publishers, too. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, and then Marvel, um, I've just worked on their uh, on their YouTube channel. I did um, some animated videos for them. Um, the uh, Marvel TLDR series, um, mm -hmm. two Spider-Man episodes, uh, World War Hulk and uh, Weapon X. So they're like animated recaps in a cartoony style of of like really classic uh, Marvel story arcs. Love it. Love it. Now, um, we were talking before I hit record and Spider-Man animation was a big part of what got you into comics. So that's kind of a full circle uh, yes. project to get to work on as well. So I imagine that was very rewarding in its own it, way. It was. It was for sure. And actually the Spider-Man, the origin of Spider-Man episode was my first uh, Marvel TLDR episode for them. And I was just like, this is so cool. So, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Um. So I, I have a sense of this from our conversation, but how did you connect with comics and visual storytelling? How did you decide this is the space for my work to be? Yeah. Um, so I would say both comics and video games have been a huge part of my life since I was a little kid. Um, I was introduced to Spider-Man uh, after being stuck in the hospital with pneumonia and a crazy asthma attack. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I saw the Spider-Man cartoon for the first time. Um, it's not a show, I think, because I was four or five. I think my mom wouldn't have let me watch it normally. But, you know, I'm stuck in the hospital. I get to I get to watch whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just loved it. And I still remember the exact episode that I saw. It was the Hydro Man episode. Anyway, that's <laughs> an aside. But I was just like, this is so cool. And um, after I got out of the hospital, um. Yeah, my uh, dad, um, for my next birthday, got me a subscription to The Amazing Spider-Man, as well as uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog comic series. Nice, uh, nice. And uh, yeah, you know, basically back then, comics were also available at 7-Eleven and grocery stores. And so whenever I saw anything, I would I would try to buy it. So, yeah. Damn, um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so that's how I came into comics as a fan. Um, I guess also... Because I had really bad asthma as a little kid, I was stuck sitting still for long periods of time with a nebulizer mask on my face. Mm -hmm. So with nothing else to do, I would just draw a lot. And um, and then I just started making comics for family and friends. And um, when I got to middle school, I actually had a, like a little group of fans in, in the, my band class. I would uh, make copies of my comics and just pass them out to the people who wanted to read them. You know, nice. <laughs> You're like, oh man, a new issue. And I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so I just was doing that in middle school. And then in high school, I was in the doing the school paper, doing uh, comics for them. And um, I didn't think of it seriously as a career until I was in art class. And yeah, my art teacher was like, uh, he, he was like the first person to really tell me seriously, this could be your career. You could make money doing this and, you know, like do it for real. And I was just like, oh, really? Um, okay. You know, like, right. so yeah. So he basically did like, he made special uh, 
like assignments just for me because he wanted me to succeed in comics and he was like the things you need to work on are uh hands and practicing hand poses and uh perspective and so he like really made me like nail down all like i had to really master perspective in high school which is really great i mean that's helped me so much and mm -hmm. the hand poses thing i he made me fill out a whole sketchbook of just drawing hands um that's awesome. and that was on one of, one of my assignments in high school. So yeah, so and then after that, I went to art college, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, to uh, major in sequential art, which is a fancy word for comics. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, yep. Since then, I've I've been doing it. So <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, and I love as an educator, I love the story of uh, a teacher that was like, "Hey, here's a special assignment for you." But also, our stories start in very similar ways because mine's hospital pneumonia too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hospital pneumonia. It was even yeah. pneumonia. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> um. So, in terms of of your style and approach, any kind of hat tips that you would give to influences and in the way that that developed? Sure. Um. So, since I've been drawing since I was a little kid, which most most artists have, you know, um, you know, when I was a kid I didn't really care about what the style was I would just draw how I saw the world kind of but I'm mm -hmm. sure there were some subconscious influences um and uh, I wasn't really trying to mimic anybody specifically I know a lot of uh young artists uh, start out like mimicking their favorite like anime style and stuff and that's a great way to start too um but yeah I kind of went backwards I don't know like I started just from how I saw things and then I started getting more influenced by comics. And so, I mean, shout out style wise would probably be when I discovered bone by Jeff Smith. That's a huge, huge, mm -hmm. like that would kind of blew my mind and it was still coming out at the time, you know, it wasn't finished yet. I, but I was, so I was like ready for the next issue all the time and getting, I was collecting the black and white uh, single issues as well as um, the paperbacks. So um, bone was huge for me um and you could probably see that looking at my work i think that <laughs> that one might be evident um <laughs> uh and also i would say superhero comics um ultimate spider-man was a big deal to me so mark bagley his work uh definitely whenever i try to draw a little more superhero -y, i think mark bagley's stuff comes through a lot and uh probably john romita jr as well who was on the amazing spider-man Mm -hmm. um, which I still, I still, every time he draws Spider-Man, I'm just like, this is, I, I love it. I, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, Jeff Smith is just, he's a creative force really. And a very yes. kind person too. A yes. very kind oh, person. Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so along the way, any particular experiences, collaborations, um, that you would like to shout out that have been really kind of like pivotal moments? Um, well, I would, I mean, yeah, I would say the Herald comic was a big deal um, for me, both because uh, I got to collaborate with some great people. Um, John Riley, the writer um, and Dexter Weeks, the colorist letterer. Um, mm -hmm. They just, it was so, yeah, it was a very collaborative atmosphere with us. We'd always email and, and call each other about things we thought and kind of, in a way edit our comic ourselves <laughs> like before it ever nice. got to action lab we like had already this is done you know we did it um I'm sorry i just dropped something don't worry about it <laughs> oh yeah but, yeah no worries <laughs> uh, but yeah so because i i had to you know i really got into it too i mean john's writing is is really fun and cool and i just think it's a yeah it was a, a privilege to work on something that interesting um and yeah, I just, you know, we were trying to make it relatively fast for, for me at the time, you know, I was really learning. So it was a very big time of artistic growth um, for me, I'd say. Um, and yeah, since then I've, you know, done a bunch of other stuff and, um, but I'm still like in the back of my head, if, if we ever got the chance to make more, I would love to. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a, it's a very cool book and I love the way there's some like, um history to it there's a fantasy yeah. element to it so i really enjoy that yeah thank you thank you <laughs> yeah. um so final official question 
I think, mm -hmm. and that is web spaces, um, spots where people can learn more, as well as anything that you're currently, that you have on the drawing table that you can talk about that you'd like to mention that's kind of a creative pursuit. Sure. Um, so the thing I'm currently uh, focused on right now is uh, some more backgrounds for Steve Lieber on another book, but I can't say what it is yet because it hasn't been announced yet. But um, whenever he's able to announce it, I'm I'm working on that too, which is always great to you know work with one of my mentors. Um, and it's a really fun, it's a really fun, interesting thing. That's all I I will say about it. Cool, <laughs> I think cool. it's and very unique. It's got to um, be fun, interesting, unique. If he's working on it, I mean, Jimmy Olsen yeah. is is yes. just a fun series. So yes, yeah. that was a great one too, which I also got to do some backgrounds on. So that was a that was a total blast to get to draw like Gotham and Metropolis and the Batmobile and yeah, I loved it. So, yeah. um, but yeah, other than that, I'm trying to do a web comic, uh, Little Charlotte's Grand Adventure. It's available to read for free on both Webtoon and uh, Tapas. Um, and yeah, uh, I I just try to work on it whenever I have a chance, like between getting pages from Steve or, or commission work, I'm just like, okay, now I can get a second to work on my web comic, right? Um, and right now, um, it's on a mini hiatus new episode wise, but I'm going back and coloring the whole thing. And then oh, once it's cool. colored, then there will be more new episodes. So yeah, I'd love it if, uh, if uh, your listeners want to check that out, that's, that would be really, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. um, and yeah, I also have a Patreon if people want to support me. No pressure at all. Uh, I'm on social media, uh, Blue Sky, Instagram, Facebook. I'm I'm off Twitter right now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be sure and link um, the webtoon as well yeah, as you. uh, your additional spaces there. And, and glad to share about your work. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, I appreciate it a lot.